<laughs> Rise of online video, the fall of traditional learning. This has been posted. Super mini pecha, super mini pecha kucha. Yeah, that's yeah, where do I send it? You send it to me or to Kim Sieber. Sorry, Kim. Don't want to put you in the spot, but send it to me. Um, you can send it to Ab Abdullah, right, Abdullah? Would you take care of everyone? Sure, yeah. Okay. Ilho, what do you think? Okay, give me that give me that globe, Ilho. Come on over here with the globe. Stand up over here, Ilho. This is where people are coming from tonight before we get started. So he, Ilho has been, uh, he's my assistant right here. Uh, so we've got uh, Susan coming from Idaho. I don't know if you can see the, on the map there, but we've got Steve from Tampa, Matt from Tallahassee, Ruth from Liverpool, Alex from Brussels, Hala from Egypt, Major Tom from Sweden, of course. We've got Mitch from Melbourne. We've got Terry from Omaha. We do include Omaha people in the show. Uh, Tan, Tanush Shrey from Richmond, Tennessee. You know, there was a Richmond, Tennessee. There's a Richmond, Indiana. There's Richmond, Kentucky, I think. There's Richmond, Virginia, of course, where the war is still being fought. We got Peggy from Atlanta, Peggy, Patty from Rome, and uh, Maria from Tempe. And he's got, <laughs> Maria, you'll love this. He's got Tempe, Florida. We've got to train these uh, people from Korea. Tempe's in Arizona. Sorry, El Ho. Okay. <laughs> but all right. He thought you were down there. Richmond, Texas. Okay. We got Tempe. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Big Hampton, New York's with us. Where else? What other places? Go ahead and type in. Got Long Island, Yuma, Arizona. All these Arizona people tonight. What's going on here? Of course, we've got Houston, Texas where a few weeks ago Pink Floyd was doing the wall. Or not Pink Floyd, but I guess uh, Roger Waters, right? Cleveland. All right, all the bonks are landed in Cleveland, Wausau, Wisconsin. Yeah, good to have Cleveland people with us tonight. Hamilton, New Zealand. Killen, Texas. I'm invited to Killen. Maybe that's where uh, Blackboard will have a conference next year. Colleen, I guess. Fulton. Worcester, again, yeah, still there. All right, well, tonight we're going to talk about shared online video. Uh, what week have you liked the best so far? I guess we had this poll up there earlier, didn't we? This is a re-poll. This is a second poll. Go ahead and type the answer to this one again. Um, for those of you, you know, who have already typed in, apologies for a second poll. Some of you have joined us a little late. Um, and Havis, go ahead and post the results. We'll click on through on beyond that. Apologies for a duplicate here. Not meant. I don't know what happened to my... But again, people like week three the best and or E equally well. Interesting. The R2-D2 one has struck a chord. This week in University Business, they said people are reading from their iPads. They're watching video. The computer trends of tomorrow for administrators is video on your iPad. The computer trend of tomorrow for legislatures is video on your iPad. The, the state of Minnesota had an article this um, two days ago. The Minneapolis Star Tribune said, we need legislate, legislative people doing video conferencing, videos, stuff we were doing in Minnesota two decades ago. And now we've got it in the legislature. Everyone's got an iPad. We can now have got bendable screens. So soon we're going to have you know, bendable text so you can wrap around your hand. In fact, my, my, my watch broke today running, and I don't have a watch now. But when I get a new one, it can have bendable, and we can watch larger screen displays as we fold them out. And so we have to worry about these small little screen sizes, right? And on the side of your car, you'll be watching videos. On the side of buildings, you'll be watching videos. Abdullah, stand up right here. Come with me here. Stand up and turn around. You'll be walking in downtown Riyadh, and you'll be reading his back. There'll be video screens on, on, on of course, if he's taller, it'd be even better. I mean, just, you know, he's, he's a pretty tall guy. Anyhow, you'll be reading on people's back. You'll be reading on buildings. You'll be reading on buses. You'll be reading on cars. Video's going to wrap all around us all the time. Ryan's with us from Adam State. Ryan, we had your stuff up there a second ago. Did you see it? I don't know if you're with us then. Um, in Bloomberg, they had an article about these MOOCs and how MOOCs are changing the world. In fact, the guy who owns the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban, a grad of Indiana U, had, an, had a blog post about higher ed changing. You know, everything's wrapped around, it's changing. This is just May 21st, May 22nd, May 23rd. I mean, just in the past couple of days, we hear a lot about MOOCs. We're hearing a lot about video. Um, and this revolution, uh, Mitch, is not going to die down anytime soon. Some of you have been to the V portal. Let's go to a yes, no question. How many of you have been to the V portal? 
go ahead and a V portal. That's the video primers in an online repository of e teaching and learning. Go ahead and type a yes, no. We got 49,262 of you saying yes, and four of you saying no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's pretty even, actually. Go ahead and type the results. Most of you have been into the V portal and taken a look. This is the this is the link to instructional consulting here at Indiana University, home of the Hoosiers. Um, this is where Il Ho works, and that's why he learned that um, that Tempe, Arizona, is in uh, is in Florida. It's Tampa is in Florida, Il Ho. Anyhow, the instructional consulting office has a lot of free stuff you can use, and including these 27 videos. If you go in there, you can get all these 27 videos on how to build community, how to, how to do a webinar like this, how to use wikis, podcasts, um, how to archive a class, uh, how to handle discussion forums and give feedback, how to foster interaction. Now, these are 10 minutes long. These took a few months to do, but um, they're all freely available. You can download them, remix them, you can even sell them, I think, as long as you thank us. Uh, we're not selling them. Uh, they play fi faster in Firefox for whatever reason. We don't know. <laughs> but they'll play even faster in YouTube. So I've reposted all 27 of these in YouTube in a channel. If you want to type in the channel, Abdullah, called Traveling Edman. So Ilho uh, or Abdullah will type that in. Traveling Edman. Yeah, with no G on traveling. Just look that up. There you go. Thanks, Ilho. Lisa Yoder's with us, my former student, Lisa, who knows everything. Thank you for joining us, Lisa. And blessings back up to you. Uh, we've got uh, collaborative tools. We've got hands-on learning. We've got plagiarism, a big one. Uh, big, 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 big one, plagiarism online. I mean, people want to know about copyright, plagiarism, quality, and assessment. Two of those are addressed in here. I, I, I don't do quality. The guy who wrote Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance did, went crazy trying to understand quality. So I refuse to do anything about quality. I'll let, I'll let all of you do that. Uh, but I did handle you know, these other two. So if you go in there, you can watch the videos. You can give feedback to Peter and Ilho and Karen Hallett and others here at IU. You can get the resources and the PDFs. If you don't want all this stuff, and if you're worried about the speed of access, you can go to the YouTube channel. And there's the YouTube channel. We've reposted it all up in there. And other people have reposted them as well. They play pretty fast in YouTube. Um, you can check them out. So we've got these. You can go to different ones. They're all 10 minutes long kinds of things. You can use them for training. You might use them for um, students to watch. Um, there's all sorts of ways. Uh, I think one of the links has got 10 ways to use them. So uh, poll number 14, which discussion question have you found the most interesting or in engaging this week so far? Question one, uh, this is an ABC. Have you found any unique video sources that you can share? What have you made? How have you made use of them? Question two, have you designed a student-centered activity including the use of video? If not, what challenges do you face regarding the use of video? Or, question th or option three, C, I have not been into week four yet. Now, if you've answered C and you really meant to put B, you can change your answer. It's, it's always possible to change your answer. Of these, go ahead and post the answers. OK, most of you have not been in yet. Some of you who have been have picked question two to answer. Designing student-centered, learner-centered activities with video. All right, great. Question three is just posted. Sarah posted this last night. Thank you, Sarah, for posting this one. If you've watched any of the 27 videos that I've created, did you discover anything you might use? Alternatively, were there any questions or concerns that you had? Go ahead and type in something if you want to in the chat window. And I see Bill Brezio has rejoined us tonight. He must have been bopped out. But thanks for rejoining, Bill. Sound was poor, so you've rejoined us. Is it better now? Thanks for rejoining us back in here. Somewhere a little slow loading. OK. Oh, sound is slow in the 27 videos, I see. Or we're slow loading. If it's slow loading, then try the YouTube channel. If it's still lo slow loading, try a different computer, because it should play well on most computers. But 
Blended learning. Most people like the blended ones. Okay. Okay. Some people like the videos, but prefer the history for music lovers. I don't sing enough in mine. Next week we're going to have singing in week five. Two of my recording artists as, um, here at IU Bloomington uh, are going to join us. They're two of my doc students. They're going to sing for us the You Learn song that Major Tom sent us. Okay. Elliot Macy says the corporate space is adapting, embracing, it, and, and, and coming in to use this shared online video because you know today there's so much possible. So today in the corporate world, they see the costs have come down. They see it's easy to edit. Um, bandwidth has gone up. And so Elliot Macy, when he does conferences, he puts keynotes up as videos in Videos for Learning website. And he says that you can do you know, YouTube videos, you can do webcam events, you can do Skype events, you can record your keynotes, you can record your guest speakers. And as I travel around the world, I notice videos become extremely popular in, in other parts of the world. In, in Australia, where I've been recently, in Saudi Arabia, in Korea, and they immediately had me broadcast. My, my uh, friend there, Young Wook Im from Hanyang Cyber University, was doing a broadcast show and brought me into Hanyang Cyber U, the number one Cyber U in Korea and Asia. In the UK, we've got the Nutty Hair Professor from Nottingham offering us free videos on chemistry. So if you want to understand iron or sodium, he's got a video of the periodic table for chemical symbols free on the web. So these resources, once they're created, can be reused in chemistry, in microbiology, in nursing, or whatever discipline you happen to be teaching. And over at Warwick University in the UK, uh, you've got, and we've got a question coming in here. How university culture is changing to accept OER? You know, how is, how are things changing to accept OER is the question. Is the culture changing? Slowly, um, but when you have so many resources being made available and many being peer reviewed by the United Nations or by a research community, it's hard to ignore them anymore. And with costs going up and parents and politicians asking questions about pricing, you have to devote more attention and planning and forethought to these OERs and OCWs. So what is, the question comes in, what is OER? OER is Open Educational Resources. And some might just look at this as Open Ed. But we have open courseware from MIT, what's called OCW, free classes or courseware. You've got open educational resources like putting all the writings of Darwin on the web or Einstein or Jane Austen or Hemingway. That would be an OER. You've also got open source, which is free software. This word open comes out a lot. And that's why with my, my book, the, the, the world is open. We use the word open in the book, but other people use open in different ways. This gentleman here at Warwick University, do we have other questions that have popped in here? Okay. Uh, this uh, gentleman here put up uh, anatomy on the web, free videos, short videos. How many institutions are accepting OER for credit? Um, it depends what you mean by institutions. In terms of accredited institutions, uh, in terms of accepting them for credit, probably you can count them on your hands. And what do you mean by credit? If you mean a credential, a certificate, or a badge, perhaps. If you mean accepting them as part of a class, probably every single institution is accepting OER as a piece of a class. But as the class, probably not yet. Um, question came in. Oh, will, will places give grades or degrees for OER? MIT has created MITx offering a certificate for the use of their OER. And Harvard and MIT have banded together to create edX at X, which will be offering free classes to people. And I'm not sure what kind of degrees they're going to offer around them, but some are offering credentials. There is the University of the People which is a free university where you can get computer science degrees and English degrees and other things. There's peer-to-peer -peer university. Where someone just pointed out in the little window there. Peer-to-peer -peer university, you have someone who will be your guide or your mentor online 
who will walk you through course contents. Thank you, Jarl. Um, you have uh, Udacity and Coursera. Both Udacity and Coursera spring out of the Stanford University initiative from last fall where they had a free class on artificial intelligence with 160,000 people. Of those, 23,000 passed the exam or some, somewhere in the 20,000 range. So higher ed is going through a revolution between MOOCs like this with course sites and Coursera, Udacity, and MITx and EDX and peer-to-peer -peer university and the university of the people and now you know, the Khan Academy and other things. You see uh, in U iTunes U, thanks to Ilho and um, Open Mozilla, a lot of things are happening. You have professors like this gentleman, Peter Abrahams at Warwick University and if you haven't been to Warwick, it's got a great castle. It's got a wonderful castle. It's got the it's better than the Edinburgh Castle, actually, and I love the Edinburgh Castle, but the War Castle is a real thing. Just don't hit your head on the top when you run through the dang castle, like I did. You got a duck, but it's a it's a wonderful, wonderful, authentic kind of place. So definitely get to the War Castle if you get to England sometime. But they have this crazy, you know, these crazy professors in England who offer up free stuff. Now everyone doesn't have to offer free stuff. Just enough people, just a few hundred, and there'll be hundreds of them. We see people like uh, Randy Posh doing a last lecture that as of last, as of this morning, I, I went online at, at 5 a.m. this morning, had 14.8 million downloads or views. His wife just came out with, his book, with a book. Now, he died a few years ago, but his wife wrote a book about what it was like living with him while he was suffering from pancreatic cancer. And after he gave his last lecture, this last lecture went viral. So we now have celebrity professors to go along with OER and OCW and Open Ed and Open Courseware and Open Source Software. And by the way, this week there's a guy named Stephen Downs who has a free book on what all this MOOC stuff means. His second free book, his first one is called Free Learning, the second one's on connectivism. And if you go to his website, type in his name there. Abdul, if you could find that. There, someone already did. Okay. So if someone, Fred, if you could type in the link to his homepage, that'd be great. Then people could download his free book. And um, so Anita loves the um, machine is us using us video from, right, from Michael Resch. Now, I interviewed Michael Resch at Kansas State back at the end of September. So you can read how he's creative, what gets to be creative. And everybody in the whole city of Manhattan, Kansas, knows this guy. You walk down the street and three-year-olds know him. You walk down the street and 80, 90, 100-year-old people know the guy. I mean, just an amazing person, Michael. And he's really gotten us to rethink this age of learning the, and what's possible. He's spoken to the Library of Congress about new technologies for learning. He's spoken around the world. He's a cultural anthropologist, and he'll be the keynote speaker at Ed Media in Denver at the end of June. That's right. Thank you, Nelly, for pointing that out. And he is writing a new book about teaching, and he has won many teaching such awards. So all this is good. Take a look at his video, A Vision of Students Today, and his video, A Machine is Us Using Us. Also, Alexandra Juhazi. Now, Alexandra taught her whole class in YouTube, and it didn't work. Whereas Michael teaches the end of his class in YouTube, which does work, and I do the same as Michael. But she has a new book, a video book, Video Stories. And Alexandra is at Fitzer College in, Ca in California, and, and she's a professor of media studies, and we had her speak at eLearn back in 2008 when she was experimenting with video in her classes. Her blog is very interesting to read about how to use new technologies like video in your classes. There's no cyberarian or librarian in YouTube, and that was the flaw that she found when she went to use YouTube for her whole class. She put, she had live lectures, but they put them in YouTube. All students' work was in YouTube. Anyhow, interesting story. Is there an outline for this lecture so I can see uh, where we are in the trajectory of ideas? Yes, there is an outline for this talk here. I will end with 10 ideas for how to teach with video from a instructor point of view and 10 from a student point of view and um, Sarah has sent that to everybody so you should have a color PDF of all the slides. That has been sent to everyone so you should be able to follow along. If you can't find this color PDF, go to trainingshare.com, trainingshare.com archive talks. If you want to type in the URL for that, um, 
TrainingShare, www.trainingshare.com. If you can't find it, or go into the Course Sites website, um, you should be able to find that and download the color PDF. The original slides I can send you as well. Good question. You know, people from Cisco have interviewed folks around the world about school reform. You know, they interviewed um, an upper right there, my friend from grad school, Okwa Lee from Chungbuk National University, and, and talked to her. They interviewed myself. They interviewed Charles Ledbeater from Cisco in the UK. And they made all these videos about school reform free on the web. This was just for Cisco initially, but now the Get Ideas people made these free. And my point here is there's lots of video today, whether it's on your mobile phone, and you can find out how stuff works, you know, how all your brain works, how the pyramids work over in Egypt, or, yeah, that video's doing interesting global stuff. That's right. And now YouTube has offered us, um, a non for nonprofits, a free website for you to broadcast yourself. There's more and more people putting their own channels or broadcasts up on the web today. You know, with Google Hangouts, with Skype, with now this um, nonprofit arm of YouTube, um, with Solia. With Solia, you can have video conferences between college students in the U.S. and kids in the Middle East to bring cultural awareness up, like Georgetown University is doing today. Um, so Solia is one of these uh, websites created by Lucas Welch, who used to work for Peter Jennings, a famous broadcaster in the U.S. We have the Khan Academy expanding to MIT, where, where MIT masters and, and, and undergraduate students are putting videos up in engineering, in physics, in chemistry, biology for first grade kids, for third grade kids, for second grade kids, for ninth grade, tenth grade, with assessments wrapped around them. So these are, this, is a, this is a college or higher education event helping little kids out, first to twelfth graders out. So this is, base, so if you're saying, well, this doesn't apply to me. I teach kindergarten kids. Well, you, this stuff does apply to you because we can have college kids repurposing stuff for little kids. And we can have little kids like the first graders in the Philippines doing a video back to me like they just did, sending me a response to my video. Um, so, you know, um, yeah, and the good point there is that broadband does cost different amounts of money for different countries. And so in, in Africa, broadband is, is expensive compared to Korea. So what happens in Africa with the MIT contents is that they have mirror sites. A mirror site is a, um, a reflection site or a, uh, a server that holds all the uh, contents in, in many parts of Africa. Many cities and, and countries within Africa have all the contents from MIT or Johns Hopkins or the, the Open U in the UK. And they, they make it, they, they don't have to go over the Atlantic Ocean and pay high fees. They pay in country rates, which is a lot better. So there are ways around these issues of broadband. Um, still expensive in Philadelphia. What's that, what's that weekly show? about Philadelphia. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, except for broadband, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, still expensive in the Philippines. Sorry about that, I bet. Uh, I thought you meant Philadelphia. <laughs> you know, well, that's why the people in the Philippines text message. It's the number one text messaging capital in the world. They took down a president through text messaging in the Philippines. Okay, they smart mob the president out of office. There's three things, the three reasons why text messaging is popular in the Philippines. Number one, they actually hold their phones the proper way. I'm upside down. But um, it, it's, it's cheap. Number one, it's cheap. Number two, they're stuck in traffic jams in Manila. And number three, people in the Philippines like to gossip. But uh, that's what I've heard anyhow. I don't know if that's really true, but we'll see if you say it's true of that. I don't know. But, uh, but it is the number one text messaging place in the world. We have another question coming in. What about information overload? OK, I hearken back to week one and week two. In week one, I gave you a framework called Tech Variety. And in week two, R2D2. In my World is Open book, I have a 10-part framework called We All Learn. 10 trends of technologies that spell we all learn. We're all overwhelmed. So these frameworks, so these models, reduce our tension, get us to reflect a little bit more about where we're going. OK, at Yale, lectures are now lively books. They're, they're turning video stream lectures like this into books. They take the transcripts of the talks 
and turn them into books instead of vice versa. Instead of writing a book first and then doing a lecture based on it, they're now lecturing at Yale. They're capturing those lectures and turning that capture into a book. So interesting ways in which we're using video today. Does the world is open come as an ebook? Yes. Kindle, PDF, whatever. A year ago, the Pew Foundation had a study that showed that of all social media, Facebook and YouTube are the most used. Wikis, Twitter, not as much. YouTube is the tool. Okay. Um, I missed that point, but okay. Uh, totally mad. Okay. Uh, Bonk is totally mad. Flip, flip. Don't flip me off. Okay. <laughs> okay. We've got Pew Foundation saying, look at the look at the growth of video use from 2006 to last year. Okay. Um, Sakyan has a nice um, blog post today. Thank you for the kind words in your blog today, by the way. Mm. You know, you can see 71% of people are sharing videos. Half of that five years ago. So people are sharing video. People are watching video. People are using video. More people in classes post links to video than create videos. And urban, suburban, and rural, the rural and, and you know, other, you know, uh, inner city school settings are catching up to suburban, at least here in North America. So people are getting broadband access. So my question is, what's the ideal length of a video on a scale of 1 to 5? Um, 1 minute, 1 to 4, 4 to 7, 7 to 10, 10 or more. And I polled 1,000 people and got their answer. So we'll see if you approximate their answer. Harry has joined the session. Thank you for joining the session, Harry. Good to have you with us. Brian Mulligan is with us. Aziz, Janice, Gadot, searching for Gadot, Willie, and Karen. Lots of people have joined the session. Bob Goulet, Bob Gouledge. Stephen Schatz? No way, not Stephen Schatz. Okay, go ahead and give us the answers there, Aziz. Wayne Jacobs. It's Joe Frazier. Smoking Joe Frazier is with us. How about you, Smoking Joe died? Joe Frazier, the, the boxer? You know, we'll get Muhammad Ali in here from Athabasca and get a real match going on here with Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali. YouTube is sometimes banned. Okay, here's the question. YouTube is sometimes banned. Isn't that right, Steve Schatz? Steve says that's, you know. So what do we do? So, so here, let's look at the answer that I got from 1,000 people. Here's your answer saying, your answer is four to seven minutes or one to four minutes or seven to ten minutes. Most people say four to seven minutes. Interesting. The answer I got from a thousand people was one to four minutes. Most people think even shorter than that is better. Now the question has come in, what about when it's banned? Okay. Well, if things are banned, you know, that's a problem <laughs> if we've got things banned. But it's not a big problem because there, if you go to my home page and you click on web resources, there are 60 portals, okay, six, zero, 64 actually, 64 portals, SchoolTube, TeacherTube, YouTube EDU, Link TV, Nassau TV, many of which would not be banned. So start with what's not banned. In fact, I, you know, a lot of times I don't want to use YouTube either. So take a look if you're in a K-12 setting, look at TeacherTube and SchoolTube. Look at Watch Know, which was created by the guy who coined Wikipedia. Larry Sanger coined Wikipedia and was kicked out of Wikipedia, or sort of, maybe not kicked out. But anyways, he left Wikipedia now and he, and he started another one called Citizendium, which didn't work. Now he's got a video site called Watch Know. So this is the ideal length, a big study that we did. Um, so short videos are 10 minute videos. Now, David Osbell said video is important because we hierarchically structure knowledge. We link what we know, and we link new content to what we already know, to prior knowledge. We subsume new information under the old stuff. We, we structure our knowledge that way, okay? We anchor our knowledge in prior learning. So if we watch a video, if we see a movie, okay? We watch some emotional, tear-jerking kind of a movie, okay, um, or watch little dogs and cats and all that kind of stuff, you know. But we have that anchor, that conceptual anchor, that advanced organizer, not advanced organizer, advanced coming before, which provides a richer context for us to learn, okay? A deep experience. 
Now, the guy on the left-hand side there, Alan Pavio, said it's dual coding theory. We've got, you know, stuff going in our eyeball, you know, and it's 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 visual learning going in this part of our brain and textual, you know, semantic learning going in the other side. It's dual coding. We can then have it not only be available, tip of the tip of the tongue learning, okay? It's on the tip of my tongue. But it's also accessible learning. We can get it out of your mouth by having it dual coded, okay? It can come out of your brain in that car and get out of your mouth, okay, and have it be useful in your class. So dual coding, have it verbally and visually. Now John Bransford there in the middle said we need to anchor learning in a macro context, okay? We need to have things in a in a rich context. He used Raiders of the Lost Ark movies to teach physics to kids and math. How many Indiana Jones is the pit wide? And could he have replaced the bag of the uh, golden statue with a bag of sand? You know. And, and then he brought in real actors. He got NSF grants to act out math scenarios. And if you have this anchor, this conceptual anchor, you watch the video first, and then you reflect on it, you can have powerful learning happening. You can come back and point out things that they missed. Okay, so the person asking earlier, where's this whole thing going? I'm going to give you 20 ways to use videos based on dual coding theory, based on anchored instruction theory, based on, um, based on you know, hierarchically structuring knowledge, you know, advanced organizers, again, going from um, advanced organizers' work from David Ozabel from Illinois, I guess he was. And then we've got Richard Mayer there in, Cal in California, Cal uh, University of California, Santa, Santa Barbara, UCSB, who talks about um, if you have two forms of media, narration and text, it's better than three forms. And you have to have them close together. He has like seven or eight principles. And Abdullah, if you can look on the web for a free article from Richard Mayer on multimedia. And he has a book on multimedia. So these are four psychologists, if you will, or four instructional psychologists, maybe, uh, and educational psychologists who have influenced the world. Their research digs back decades ago. I mean, Alan Pavio is famous for mnemonics research and bizarre mnemonics and Johnny mnemonics movies and all this. But now today, all this stuff we know from Bransford, from Pavio, from Ozabel, and from Mayer is alive and well in YouTube, teacher tube, school tube. I mean, we have to ground learning in psychological research. So that my question to you is, which concept intrigues you and do you want to read more about? Anchored instruction from Bransford, advanced organizers from Ozabel, um, and Piaget, in fact, uh, dual coding theory from Pavio, macro context from Bransford, and multimedia theory from Richard Mayer. Which of these intrigues you? You should be able to go back to the web and find articles on all this. Robin says, see, dual coding theory, that's what I want. OK, Peggy says, hey. Anchor my learning for me, please. And I guess we'll be doing a lot of that in here today. Peggy says, no, C is the answer. C, C, C. And Navarch says, D. D is the answer. And Nay, Nay Lin says, A is the answer. MJ says, A. Mitch says, D. OK, well, we've got uh, Mike Wanger. Mike, you're saying D, macro context, OK? You're not, uh, yeah, you're kind of the minority there, Mike, seven of you. Okay, 7 out of 217. We're up to 217 people with us today. And we're just getting started here. So if you're joining us late, you know, we're, over, we're an hour in, or I'm saying we're just getting started. We're, I'm going to go through 20 activities, but they're going to be quick this week. I wanted to give a lot of background information about video here. Look at all these sites out there for video. And again, if you go to my home page under Resources, I've got a portal of portal. I've got 64 video sites I've indexed. I have also have on the web my learning theories class with examples of how I use video. And my 27 videos, my V portal is there. So everything's under, if you go to trainingshare.com, www.trainingshare.com resources, and Abdullah will type in the link to um, the web resources. Um, if you just click on my home page, there you go. Just give him that link, Abdullah. Here's a, Abdullah is hard at work over here, as you can see. He's being paid big bucks to be with us. You know, uh, King Abdullah didn't give him too much when he was sent over here, so he's got to work hard for me. Anyhow, so we got BBC News. So those of you worried about being, um, you know, firewalled out of YouTube, you got CNN. 
BBC, MSNBC, MIT World, anyone who gives a talk at MIT World, you know, BBC has great links for video. Uh, TeacherTube, Link TV, National Geographic Specials in Link TV. You've got Nassau TV and not just liftoffs, okay? You've got book TVs of famous authors being interviewed. You've got the Research Channel. You've got iVideo Song, learning how to play guitar, Major Tom. Okay, ground control. To, they'll probably teach you how to sing that song. Ground control to Major Tom. Jan Carter from ASU. Edu has joined us. Thank you, Jan Carter. Whoever Jan is, let us know. I've got M L M J J N. Sharon has joined us. Thank you, Sharon. Is that Sharon Lynn from Georgia? Don't know. <laughs> We've got you know Google. You've got Current TV. I mean, Al Gore was. We got lucky that he didn't become president because he created Current TV. People creating the news. And in, in The World is Open book, I have a great story of meeting somebody in current TV who ended up editing my entire book. She just happened to be the award-winning documentary person of the day talking about African schools, Sega Ghana schools. Cool stuff in current TV. You know, all these websites. How cast, you want to learn how to fix your plumbing? How cast and wonder how to. You want big thoughts from Deep Chopra and uh, Richard Branson? about how, the, how we started Virgin Airlines, big think. You want a TV lesson? TV lesson. So you go to CNN like I was yesterday. They're talking about the one year anniversary of the, of the big, you know, massive tornadoes down in, in Alabama and in other parts of the South. They talk about uh, over in MSNBC, a, a deaf uh, pitcher who won a series for a, a college. You know, interesting news stories all the time in, in current TV. They talk about mining public land for profit in China. They talk about kids smoking, you know, three-year-old kids smoking cigarettes in Indonesia. Interesting articles always in, in current TV. You can go to MIT World and get the highlights for high school. My friend Walter Lewin, actually I don't know him, I shouldn't say him, but an interesting guy, Walter Lewin, he gets zapped. You know, the guy literally gets zapped, you know, with, with, with 50, you know, he's sitting there in the Faraday cage holding on to the Faraday cage and he's zapped with 200,000 volts of electricity and he doesn't die. And you get worried about him, thinking he's going to die. Walter Lewin's going to die here. And he's like, ah! you know, and, you know, and he's still alive. And all these demos that he's doing about, you know, relativity or, or whatever, you know, uh, in physics are all up and, and they are for any physics instructor in the world to use. And the highlights for high school have stuff for advanced math, AP math, AP physics, AP chemistry. And now they've got the Blossoms Project at MIT. It's a blended learning project of the best teachers from around the world, not just MIT instructors, people from Jordan, people from... Uh, from coming from Saudi Arabia, even with Abdullah, people from Russia, uh, from Finland, even Sweden, they're coming in in the Blossoms projects to offer videos on best practices in teaching. So MIT is doing cool stuff all the time, and we should use it. You want to hear Thomas Friedman talk about the world is flat? It's an MIT world. You want to hear about my, the youngest teacher, Adora Swiftak? You know, she's up in TED Talks. Talking, telling adults what they can learn from kids. Now, Adora has been teaching, as I said before, since she was six years old. She's 14 now, been teaching more than half of her life, and she's ready to retire. You know, but, but she's up in TED. We got Sugata Mitra talking about the hole in the wall technology in India, where they have kids sharing a computer in a hole in the wall in the slums of Mumbai and Delhi. And now he's got the granny cams, and in, in, you know, the grannies in the UK offer one hour a week to uh, of their of their broadband access to tutor kids in India, TED talks online, inspirational talks, and you know you've got all these. You know we got Ellie Carchesman, a grad of our program, talking about gaming technology and how boys have been disenfranchised in K-12 schools. All these TED talks out there. You know we've got uh, my good friend Aaron Daring from the University of Minnesota. Minnesota, you betcha. And you know, and he's up on the in the Arctic doing his polar husky projects and and Earth education, traveling the world. And last month he gave a TED talk on April 21st, and it's available for all of us to watch. Inspirational stuff. How he's creating curriculum around adventure learning for kids in schools. And we've got, of course, Michelle Ray, who lost her job when the mayor was kicked out of D.C. schools. The first thing she did when she created Student First, when she was no longer the chancellor in DC, she put videos up explaining Student First. People aren't putting text up anymore 
we're putting video up first to explain what we're doing. And then she's, you know, got the video up in TED, uh, a TED talk in Wall Street a couple weeks ago. Videos become our mechanism for communication. Look at this. You know, I can show you Abdullah right here and bring him in. It's in video. You know, you can text you a message, but it's just not as good as seeing Abdullah live, you know. And um, listen to him. I'm going to put him on here during break time here. He's going to talk to all of you, and Neil Ho will too. You don't like YouTube? You're, you're banned from YouTube? YouTube EDU. You want to talk about transgenetic fish? Um, you know, it's in YouTube EDU. Every university in North America has a YouTube EDU channel pretty much. We need to use this contents in new ways. And now TED is dividing up their contents into TED Ed. So there's not just TED Talks, there's TED Ed. And I showed it last week. I didn't want to bore you and show it again, but you should be aware that TED Ed exists. YouTube EDU exists. Okay? These are the academic mm, derivations of all this OER, Open Ed Resources, Earth, Academic Earth. You know, the guy whose picture you can barely see there on the bottom of the screen, the redheaded guy from Yale University, did a talk on Freudian psychology. And I was enamored with that. I never learned anything. In, I got an, a, a PhD in ed psych. I never learned about Freud or Jung. Um, so I, I watched the video, and I got blown away by the quality of his ideas. And I bought his book. Now, Academic Earth is indexing the best videos of Yale and Harvard and MIT and other places around the world. Um, resources needed for using or created video, creating video. I will post, I will put that as a question for other people. Could you post in the chat window what resources you need to create or share videos, to download videos? Udacity is to create podcasts. GarageBand is to create podcasts. Camtasia is a tool you can use to build videos. Camp Studio is another tool you can use to use videos. Flip videos you could, but it died out, as Anita pointed out there. Smartphones, snag it. Um, Snag it is one. Yeah, Cisco bought out the flip video and then trashed it. iPad, you can do an automatic video. Screencaster, Screener, Jing, and um, GoView. These are screen capture tools. Um, yes, Sukiana said Captivate. Yep. Video is just a video camera. Screen, screen, screen what was that? Screencast-O-Matic or something like that. Yeah, it's a, a quick time video. Maybe um, what we'll do, we'll have. These are all great. So type them all in. I'll have Meng Wan and you. Uh, they'll type in a, a summary of what you've said here, uh, of the different ways that you can use all these. Great. They'll they'll do that all for all of us. Um, yeah. So did I miss something here? So Academic Earth. This is a portal for good quality stuff, but it's long stuff. APA ADA compliance issues. That's another good point. Is some of these. Um, there's a website called Dot Sub. Dot Sub is a free tool for subtitling videos. So if you've got people who are, um, might have some kind of impairment where they can't, um, they can't uh, listen to something, you can type in the transcript. So if they're hearing impaired, uh, then .sub might be a tool for that. And there are other tools out there for people who might be visually impaired. You've got the JAWS screen reader, of course. Um, there are others people will start posting in the window. Some of the other tools. Leanne, thank you very much. And Mark, thank you very much. Uh, Learn Zillion is a new tool for matching kids up to the lessons that they need. It's a platform that combines lessons for grades 3 to 9 with uh, lesson plans and core content that people need to learn. Book TV is you know, interviews of famous authors, whether it's the guy who wrote Brain Rules, John Medina at the University of Washington, and every chapter in Brain Rules is a, has a video. He's a cool guy, that guy, John Medina at Brain Rules, interesting guy, um, fascinating guy. He talks faster than me, apparently. He's on, I don't know, some kind of speed thing. I mean, he's, he's not drinking you know, vitamin water like I am, you know. I mean, he's, he's drinking something else, I think. But uh, anyhow, he's an interesting guy, and, and I recommend his book highly. But you can listen to him interviewed in book TV and listen to all these people interviewed. Go to his website. You know, you got Michelle Ray in Fora TV again. You got Vin Cerf creating an interplanetary internet. He was at Sun Micro, now at Google, creating the interplanetary internet, getting robots on Mars to talk to us here. You know, this is this is cool stuff. You've got people interviewed on Fora TV. Fora TV is the conference channel or YouTube for thinkers. It's called videos in business, technology, science, politics, and culture. Uh, and you know, some of these are thousands of these are free. 
this used to be totally free. Now they have some as a paid version, some uh, and a paid for per view, and some are you know ten thousand. It says free. So you know, I, I think ten thousand is a lot. You know, it's a lot of stuff and for a television. So you want to hear about Michelle Ray transforming schools? You want to see? You know, uh, Howard Gardner, the multiple intelligence guy, ask her a question in the middle of her interview. You want to hear from Vince Cerf or Sergey Brin or, you know, one of the founders of Google. I'm blanking on the other one right now, but I'm talking fast. TV lesson. Two years ago, I got a phone call from Mongolia, and the lady calling me said, Dr. Bonk, I'm applying to your program. So that's great. Apply to our program. We'll take you. Well, she ended up going somewhere else, but in the middle of the phone call, she said, Dr. Bonk, we've got H1N1 outbreak here in Mongolia, so we're watching TV lesson. Kids aren't coming to school. Pretty cool stuff. When we've got Snowmageddon here in the U.S., we've got H1N1, we've got SARS in China, you know, we've got Haiti with earthquakes and Chile with earthquakes, and we've got volcanoes in Europe, and you know, Snowmageddon in D.C. with Michael and Kelly, as I mentioned there. You know, we've got these catastrophes like the Alabama, you know, and Texas and whatnot, tornadoes in Arkansas. You know, we, I don't know what happens in Saudi Arabia, what kind of catastrophes, the snow, the sandstorms or something, I guess, but uh, I don't know, as these, yeah, sandstorms. <laughs> Anyhow, when you have, and you could have, you know, in, in, in Libya, you have protests. People can learn from home on TV lesson. People can learn from at home in Link TV or, or, or other ways. You see the power of this. Big think. You know, the guy who teaches the largest class at Harvard is a class on happiness. <sighs> Breathe in. Breathe out. We all want to be happy. We all want to be happy. You know, I had my happy face up here the first couple of weeks. I don't want my happy balls over there. Abdul, go get my happy ball from my bag. You know, people want to be happy. He has thousands of people in this class. This doesn't have a, it's not even a MOOC. It's a lecture hall. He wrote a book on you know, ways to become happy. You don't have to get his book. You don't have to go to his class. You don't have to go to Harvard. Listen to him for three minutes. He gives you all the tips about how to become happy. Okay? And you got the guy with anti-aging genes. I could make a joke there, but I think, you know, um, anyhow, you know, all these interesting things in Big Think, right? You got Link TV, John Bowermaster. If you haven't been to JohnBowermaster.com, now John Bowermaster, when the BP oil spill hit, he was down there covering it, not from the, not from the British Petroleum point of view, Mark, but from a environmentalist point of view. You know, and he's covering the great, you know, garbage dump in the Pacific Ocean and other things. He goes by sea kayak to the oceans of the world in Antarctica by sea kayak. National Geographic specials for free in Link TV. Education without borders. Actually, it's called television without borders. Education without borders from, uh, that's a conference Mark ran in Dubai, right? Every other year, a free conference for students. It'll be not, it'll be next year. If you've got any undergrad or grad students in Dubai every, what, what month is it, March, February? Education Without Borders. So Television Without Borders you know, is a, also a cool site. National Geographic on the web. I, I had a pleasure of being at their headquarters in January with Mike Wanger, who joined me for a, a class of wine. And, uh, and all people doing cyber learning research were there. And they filmed us and put them all up in a website. And, you're, and he was right. It's a cool place, National Geographic. Very cool website. But not just National Geographic, you got Earthwatch, you got Greenpeace, all sorts of other websites up there that you can use. Wonder How To and Howcast, interpreting body language, learning how to fix a mobile phone that gets wet, which I wish I would have known about, you know, when mine kind of fell in the toilet, but we won't talk about that, will we now? So I think Anita had that problem too at one point, but we won't pick on Anita. Anyhow, you can go to Wonder How Cast and How To to fix your plumbing or something like that, right? Abdullah, have you, have you ever dropped your phone in the toilet? My, my daughter dropped my cell phone. <laughs> his daughter dropped his cell phone. And he blames that on his daughter, okay? He'll probably blame it on his wife, Sarah, here in a minute. His wife's going to have another baby. Uh, how do we determine the value of free resources? I think, you know, first of all, you need to have peer review of the contents as a department or as an organization. So if you're in engineering or if you're in nursing, uh, if you're in banking, your organization should be evaluating the quality of stuff that's out there or your department should be doing that uh, with some kind of a rating scale on utility of the content, the multimedia features of that content, the ease of navigation of that content, the accuracy of that content, 
the reuse of that content, the maintainability or the age, how, how quickly will it age. Uh, there are many ways in which, you, uh, many dimensions in which you could assess the quality of open educational resources, including who created it, what the credentials are of the person created. Uh, some people look at how many times has it been reused, how many times has it been linked to. Uh, so they look at number of links back to that resource as an indicator of quality. Look at how many times it's been blog posted or RSS fed. So there, there are dimensions of technology as well as um, aspects of pedagogy that you could look at. Okay, Clip Chef, you want to learn how to cook Korean beef or stromboli or organic stuffed red peppers? Clip Chef, Master Chef. Master Chef is used a lot in Australia, I noticed when I was there. Um, great website. So, you know, so which of these shared online learning websites, resources, sound interesting to you? A, B, C, D, or E. Big Think, Book Chef, Clip Chef, Current TV, or TV Lesson? I'm curious which one you think of these. Some of you are going to type more than one in there. Okay, I see that in there in your answers. A lot of, I mean, again, go to trainingshare.com. 64 of these websites. Five years ago, none of them existed. None of them existed. Well, maybe six years ago, okay? None of them existed. I mean, this is a huge change. And you know, if we, some of this is flat, it's talking head stuff, but if we put annotations on them, if we have polls and surveys like we have here, if we have discussion groups wrapped around them, if we repurpose them, if we can clip them and use a piece of them and integrate a piece 90 seconds, 30 seconds when we need it, just in time, on demand, so video, yes. It alone, the video can change learning just as video. And my life changed just with TV courses and correspondence courses with videotapes. And people's lives do change with that. But even more so, we can think about how to engage the learner in some way, how to get them to interact around the content, annotate it, touch it, feel it, bang up. Abdullah on the head, you know. <laughs> so let's what's the results of these? Can we get can we post that up there? I didn't see any results posted yet of these. So Harry's joined the session. So right now we got fifty three saying A. We've got sixteen with B. A is so big think. Sounds interesting to people. They short clips of of well known people. The big think people will be happy to hear that, actually. I will write to them this week and let them know, actually. Uh, and TV lesson, maybe not so much, OK? So we could put five other ones up here. Current TV would be A, you know, and, and we could put um, YouTube being B and all that, and I could have you vote on that. But, uh, you know, that's, that's enough polling and voting. So, you know, maybe go ahead in the chat window. Of all the websites I mentioned, which of those might you use now? You know, which of those might you go back and use now? And I only mentioned a few. You know, NASA TV, iVideo Song, the Research Channel. Hardly even showed those. Um, Fora TV, Book TV, TV Lesson, uh, BBC, MSNBC, CNN, TED Ed, TED Talks, MIT World, B, all these things. Okay. So now we're coming finally to the heart, and then we'll take a break. We'll spend 10 minutes here on the heart of the talk for today. It'll be a short little overview of, of what's possible. Ted Crunch, Lynn says. OK, Ted Crunch. Crunch is doing crunchies. So is this a revolution? We got an ABC kind of answer, has these. ABC, is this a revolution? Yes, maybe, or no, Haviz. Good. And Haviz is back. We got Haviz and Aziz. Serena the second is here. Good to have Serena. Sharon. Sharon Forte. Sharon Archibald. Thank you, Sharon, 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 Steve and Steve and Steve. Valerie is here. Will and Willie and Zachary's back. Zachary had an A. Zachary's got an A. Will's got an A. Teppin has got an A. The rise of what was that? The rise of shared videos got a B. <laughs> Sue's got an A. 
Shayas has got an A. We've got Sapel has got an A or a B. Ross got an A. Ramesh? What's Ramesh got? Ramesh, you didn't vote. Reginald, you didn't vote. You got to vote. Penny, you got to vote. ML, MJ, you got to vote. Hey, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Which Melissa is that? Melissa Grabner, I hope. Mark, good deal. Maria's got a B. Go ahead and post those of these. Maria 1 has got a A. Maria, Maria, Maria's got a We got A, B. We got a lot of Maria's here. Malcolm? Malcolm Murray's got a B. Major Tom, what did you put in, Major Tom? B, and he's gone away to sleep, it says. <laughs> Lisa Hua, Alex, ah, from, from North Carolina. You did not vote. You did not vote, Lisa Huang. Okay, good to have you with us. Mark's posted a link for us. Go ahead and post the results of these. We got 64 with A. We got 42 with B. We got 10 with C. So most of you think there's a revolution of some kind or might be a revolution going on. I still don't see the results of the poll, but maybe it's coming slowly to my screen. Uh, so let's let's go into 10 ways. And again, have these post these if you have There they are. So we've got them in front of us. It's just taking a little longer on my screen. 10 acres and 10 enders. 10 ways to think about using video from an instructor point of view. First of all, you can use a video as an advanced organizer to start your class, to get people's brains going, to get them thinking, to get their nodes firing. Um, to get them engaged in the content in some ways. If it's about you know, um, the profit and loss of Apple Computer, a uh, short video on Steve Jobs' life. If, it's a, if you're going to do a discussion about uh, a new m method in medicine, you might show uh, an experiment with this new uh, procedure, this new surgical procedure in gastric bypass surgery or something that I won't watch. You can show it. I won't watch it. But if you've got something to, to get people interested in the topic first before lecturing. So I might have my students in my behaviorism module in learning theories watch B.F. Skinner. Hear that B.F. Skinner was the chair of psychology at Indiana. Uh, tell them where B.F. Skinner raised his daughter here in Bloomington, Indiana in the Skinner box. Tell them I worked with B.F. Skinner's daughter and husband and so forth and get people interested in it through the video. My students find that the video combined with the text, combined with the lectures coming in, changes the class because they've got that video content that visualizes what it is the, the book is talking about. I mean, we can, we can read a boring book over and over and over again. But seeing the video for 30 seconds lets some of those actors come to life, you know, and, and you can find out who ordered this truckload of dung, you know, or whatever the book is about. That's my Buddhist book I'm reading here during all the warm-ups. But anyhow, if Zhang Wan's with us here, she'll know. Zhang Wan, her, recommended that. I bring that today. Actually, I'm finishing this book I'll recommend called Quiet. And I'm not being too quiet today in here, but I'm just finishing that one. And, and I just finished, um, and it's by um, Susan Cain, who's an introvert. It's by introverts and extrovert. And this alone together is kind of similar by um, Sherry Turkle, who was the first speaker I ever heard. Um, she's an MIT professor. And last week I met Tom Vander Ark in, in, in Columbus, Ohio. He has a book called Getting Smart and a website called Getting Smart. He's helped uh, learn Zillion and Udacity and many of these companies get started, actually, Tom Vander Ark, how digital, how digital learning is changing the world. Some interesting books out there that I'm currently sh uh, going, shifting through. Hey, you know, watching a video. It can make the book come alive, or you might end with a video, having an ender, not a starter, but a capstone experience where I might watch the guy who has the incredible brain after talking about working memory, and this guy remembers pi, pi 3.14 out to 22,000 digits. This guy can multiply millions of numbers. To, uh, he can multiply 2,492,000 by 32,894 give you the answer just like that. He can learn Icelandic language in one week. He thinks about things in visual. He sees numbers visually because he had autism and epilepsy as a kid and his brain got rewired, kind of like Steve Schatz is with us tonight. You know, Steve's brain was rewired, right, Steve, a long time ago. Just kidding, Steve. Just kidding, Steve. Anyhow, 
you know, <laughs> we can we can get people inspired after listening to a boring lecture from me on working memory or long-term memory, a short video about this kid who created his own language and learned Icelandic in a week and, you know, can do amazing things. Or watching a video on improving your memory can get people thinking after a class, having a class end, or start a class and end a class with a video. So if I'm teaching microbiology, I might have a video from my mentor, Brian Ford, talking about living cells. I might have a video from 30 years ago. Um, how does watching a webcam compare to watching a video? I, I hope it's a little bit better. Nelly, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> Dr. Nelly, didn't my book ever arrive? It took months to get to Canada, old Canada. I don't think they deliver mail in Canada. You tell your relatives who moved to Canada. She's not from Canada. I think Nelly said, are you in Israel or something? Vicky says, is there anyone in education that you don't know? Uh, ha, ha. I don't know. I don't know you, Vicky. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. Just, are there any more free books uh, giving away the, yes, let's give away. That's a good question. Let's give away another book. Here, draw another name. We'll see whose name gets drawn. We should get Fred Haas's name drawn, huh? He's asking. And why don't we do that? Fred, Fred, since you're prompting me to draw, you send, you send your address to, um, to Ilho or someone or Sarah, and I will give you a book. Zachary Burkmeyer, and I think Zachary's with us tonight. Zachary just won a book. You can thank, yeah, Zachary's with us, so everyone clap for Zachary. And as you can see, I'm not just reading any old thing. It does say Zachary on there. Zachary's going to be quite pleased with that. Um, so we got three, four books now. So go ahead, Fred. And um, Dr. Mustafa's with us. So you can start with Brian Ford, end with Brian Ford, a fascinating person, one of the most engaging people. He's got 40 years of his life in microbiology, 40 years of his life in the British Broadcasting Corp and radio, all up on the web. And you can watch them to get inspired into biology or into science. You can also have students preview videos in their course management system in Desire to Learn, in Moodle, in Instructor or Canvas, or in Blackboard course sites, or what was WebCT or Angel or whatever you're using. Um, you can have them preview them in the discussion forums in Blackboard. And then you want the Handbook of Blended Learning? I'm sorry, that's an expensive book. Oh, I can't even afford the Handbook of Blended Learning. Um, oh, you've got it, Nelly. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's why I'm going to give away my next book. These publishers just cost so much money. Anyhow, you can watch the videos, then come to class, like the synchronous session, having discussed them already. You know, if students participate in online discussions, you could, you could ask everyone to post so much and respond to their peers online, right? That might be something that you do. You might anchor your discussion. Instructor finds videos and shows them to class, and students discuss them in small groups. So you might have um, discussions wrapped around the videos. You might not start your course with a video, but you might show a series of them during class or during a synchronous session that have discussion wrapped around them. So of these five ideas, Anchor your course with a video to start. End your course with a video to capstone it off to end. Start or end your course with a video, or have discussions, previews, or have group work wrapped around the videos. Which of these might you use? Just pick one. Aha, Javier says, e. I'm an E person, Javier says, OK. You must be coming from Mexico, Mexico. We anchor with discussion down there. OK. Susan says, A. Hey, I anchor to start. Stephen. And Madonna says, I like them all. Everything stopped. Uh-oh, that's not a good sign. If everything stopped. Actually, that's a good point. You can stop the video at any point. Go ahead and post these as these. It's kind of equal between 1, 4, and 5. It's kind of equal across all of these. I'm not sure if I have to take this call. Or, well, I got a call from Rachel at Cardholder Services. I was worried it was, it was Sarah, but of course, Cardholder services have my phone. They want me to get some loans or something. I don't know. How about letting the students create the video? Ooh, who said that? That person probably wants to win a book. Sorry. Uh, that's a great question. You know, that's a great question, and I think you're fishing for an answer, so I will send you a fish. Just let me know who that is. Anyhow. 
you know. Um, that we're going to come back to. We will come back to that notion of creating. We talked about that last week and the week before. We're on instructor center. I'm giving you a 10 instructor center. I'm going to go to 10 student centered here in a second. Okay. Okay. Did we post the results of that? Did you ever post the results of that last night? It's there. Okay. You can see A and E are in there. Anchoring with discussion and video. Um, to, yeah, anchoring. Just to use it as an anchor. Pause and reflect. Instructor plays a pause, portion of the video and pauses for reflections. Continues playing the video. More reflection. Reflect, reflect, reflect. Remember the R2D2 model. Read, reflect, display, and do. We don't debrief enough. We don't reflect enough. Key concept reflections. Instructor shows a video. Students reflect on the concepts embedded in it. He replays the video one or two more times. Goes back to that same two minute video, three minute. Play it again, Sam. Play it again. And he asks students to say pause. Students yell pause. I see a concept, you know, from a chapter. Uh, and what is that concept? Conceptual attainment is important. Not just watching a video in snooze time. You know, when Steve Schatz was in my class in 1999, I showed a video and he was sleeping. He was just, you know. And he looked at my website and said, this is all bonk, you know. I mean, Steve was kind of rough on me for a while. And, you know, I had to slap him up a little bit. But, you know, I, finally Steve said, pause. I see a concept there. Right, Steve, just giving you a hard time, Steve. Number eight, <laughs> video anchor lecture and test. An instructor shows one or two videos at the start of class, then lectures on those concepts. When done lecturing, you might have a handout, a worksheet, a test, a, a crossword puzzle, a project, a problem, a case. And students then go through that as a test, a quiz, a performance measure, if you will. Number nine, on-demand conceptual anchoring review. You don't know when you're going to use a video. You just don't know sometimes. So you got all these videos. You know, I got this. You know, I got this video I want to show in my class, and you know, I got another video I might show in my class, and I got all these videos. If you go to my training share site, you'll see I have eight videos every week, and just put it in when you need it. Put it on, okay? And and pause your class. Stop. I'm going to stop class now, and we're going to watch a video, okay? And I'm going to come back in, okay? You know, it's almost time to start jumping again and jumping again and jumping again. Who needs to jump? Let's all jump from anyone in Africa, anyone in Europe. Let's all get jumping again and jumping again. Anyone in uh, Asia or Australia, and all the people in North America and South America. Anyhow, ah, yeah, I need to jump. I'm sorry. So anytime, so the point is we can be jumping anytime. You can also be inserting a video at any time or any moment. Might as well jump. <sighs> That's, uh, yeah, might as well jump. You know the, the lead singer from, what's the name of that group now? I'm blanking in my head. Might as well jump. That, the lead singer is from Bloomington, Indiana. How about higher and deeper? Van Halen, thank you. Tommy Lee Roth is uh, from Bloomington before he lost his hair. Okay, David Lee Roth, not Tommy Lee. <laughs> Tommy Lee's the actor. How oh, about higher and deeper levels of thinking? That's a good point. That's a great. That's a great adaptation. Thinking about how to embed uh, Bloom's taxonomy or some other taxonomy of thinking, uh, or looking at creative thinking or critical thinking. That was last week's topic. You might have activities that wrap around knowledge level, comprehension level, synthesis, application, um, and evaluation. That's a really, who had that question, Abdullah? That's a really great question. Um, so thank you for that. Yes, you should be thinking about that. So stopping and pausing to look for concepts and theories. And then you might have video conferencing, video anchors, copyright issues, videos that are posted to YouTube or TeacherTube or SchoolTube. I believe have, here, at least here in North America, all videos have fair use. If, you're, you know, if they've been posted up on a public website, um, Assuming it's not copyrighted content, and most things that are copyrighted are taken down by YouTube in short order. But you can always go to the website and look at the, create, look at the Creative Commons copyright. My 27 videos put a Creative Commons copyright that lets people remix, reuse, share. So we've put that on there. Sorry that Anne Marie has to leave. I'm trying to, so this is the first 10, Anne Marie. You can watch the other 10 online, and we'll be taking a break in a few minutes. YouTube videos might be shown in a video conference or web conference with other classes, and then you might have discussions through video across sites, across colleges, across locations. 
So of these second five, which do you like the best? You can clear this off of these. If you could clear these numbers off, there we go. Uh, pause and reflect. Key concept reflections. Video anchor, then lecture, then test or performance. On demand, using the video on demand, or video conferencing competitions, or anchoring and entering with video, which might you use? Very evenly dis distributed here. Todd is with us, and Valerie Holmes. Not Valerie Mahomes. I team talk with Valerie Mahomes. This is Valerie Holmes. Tippin's got a B. Todd's got an E. Verena's got an E. A lot of E people. I'm more surprised. Look at why don't you go ahead and post these? There are more E's than I had expected. I'm not saying E won here, didn't win. A and B naturally won, but a lot of people are doing video conferencing. Very interesting. Okay. Wow. All right. Let's look at student point of view. So from a student point of view, you might have students finding stuff on the web as the cool resource provider. My students sign up to find stuff I don't know about. And then they show them in a live class or they post them in an online class or a blended class to the web, to OnCourse here at IU or Sakai, to Blackboard or to Angel or whatever system you're using. You can post them up in the discussion forum or in a wiki. You could post them in Wikispaces or PBWiki. Or scoop it. That's another one someone just pointed out. Scoop it. It's another place you might post this stuff too. Thank you for pointing that out. Was it Tiffin or somebody who pointed that out? Um, yeah. So posting these up. These then can be reused the next semester. So the nice thing about this is it, students are free. Peers are free. You can have everyone do this once and they get power. They get authority in your class. They get some say in what's happening. You can also have students as cool resource providers, find videos and share them with the class prior to meeting. So instead of putting them up during the meeting, instead of showcasing them in a face-to-face -face class the first five minutes of class, you can post them ahead of time and have discussions wrapped around them to have previews before coming to class. You can also have collaborative anchoring between the instructor and the students where your students find things and if it's an online class, they send you the links. If it's a face-to-face -face class, they meet you in your office hours and you negotiate which ones you're going to show collaboratively as a team. They become co-teachers with you. You could have students create videos or every student finds a video that demonstrates a concept and every student gets 60 seconds or 30 seconds or two minutes. And if you have 30 students for a half hour, everybody goes up for one minute and shows a concept of what they've learned with maybe a handout of what the concepts are, maybe looking at Bloom's taxonomy or some other taxonomy. Or as the question came in earlier from somebody about um, students creating, you could have your students create YouTube videos as Yua Ma, who's one of the people in here, has done. Um, Yua did two or three wonderful videos in my class. Abdullah, who's sitting here with me, he did some wonderful video stuff too in my class, but he likes to use Prezi more often. And um, Il Ho, who's over on this side of the room, he typically doesn't do a whole lot in my classes. He just kind of lays around and the and, and kind of lazy guy. But anyhow, just kidding, Il Ho does a lot. <laughs> anyhow, Il Ho is a good guy. He does a lot of hard work. Uh, but he, he's in our instructional consulting office and helping a lot of people learn how to in integrate technology. He's one of the eight TAs. Two, these two guys are two of the helpers in the, in the class. So I'm bringing two people in every week. So have your students create videos. And if you go to my home page, underneath my picture is my R685 class. You can watch their videos if you're interested. My students do videos in learning theories. There's um, one of my students there, Shuya, who's going to start our doctoral program. She just finished her master's here. She did a video about blogging. Um, other students do videos on other things, and then we showcase them. We have popcorn night. We have YouTube night. So um, you know, of these, pick one that you might use. Go ahead of these and clear that off. Would you have your students being cool resource providers with handouts during class? Would you have them do previews of videos before class? Have, maybe have them be a co-teacher collaboratively anchoring? Would you have students find videos that demonstrate a, a, a concept? Or have students create their own videos, have them create their own products, have them showcase their thinking and their work? And we've got a lot of A's and C's going on here and some D's. Go ahead, Javis. Go ahead and put the results. U.S. says A. Okay, so you are 
who's been in my class, she likes A. Verena says D. Vicky says A from USI. University of Southern Indiana, is that USI there? Okay, then we have met. <laughs> uh, anchor archives, having students who you know have an archive of work from previous years and students are updating the archive, you know, as maybe an optional assignment or maybe as the, um, a small assignment, having students going through your your uh, videos and having them update them in some way. Having competitions, maybe having students find the relevant videos for next week and the ones the instructor picks to show, those students get bonus points or recognitions or awards or badges, a badge of honor. Maybe having students, um, they might rank, maybe having students across sections of the same class or different institutions, they might share YouTube videos and rate them some way. We, we have a rating system in course sites now. We can rate answers like in Amazon. You might have students doing debates on a pro and con side with videos to supplement the debates and their point of view, having discussions wrapped around it. Or they might interview the video creator themselves, having students you know, um, talk to the creator of the video and interview that person. So um, to get more information on Carl Fish and why he created the video Shift Happens and what happened in the fourth version of Shift Happens and how his life changed through the video. This one technology coordinator in Denver or Littleton, Colorado, his life changed by creating one video where UNESCO, IBM, United uh, um, World Bank, United Nations, Indiana University, you name it, people around the world are watching his video for strategic planning meetings. He did the video for his teachers about technology every year, about new technology. And one year I said, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to create a video about culture and how the U.S. is not keeping up with China and not keeping up with India. So what do you think here about this, you know, um, in terms of this, this, these these five answers. Well, let's look at, we'll go ahead of these and clear this off. Pick one of these you might use. Anchor archives, anchor competitions, video sharing and ranking, anchor debates, and anchor creator interviews. Okay. So far, number, number two is not getting many votes. <laughs> number C is getting the most of these. Go ahead and post that up there. We got a question. How long should a live video session be? Well, it all depends. It can be 20 minutes, can be a half hour, it can be two hours. It really does depend. If you have guest speakers, um, we've done three, four hours. I wouldn't do one that long, but we're almost done here. But an hour, 45 minutes. This is an hour and a half we're going in or even over that. You can see number C. So finally, who can use videos? Instructors can use videos to start or end a class, to anchor concepts. Students can use videos to demonstrate what they know and to share ideas and present ideas. But also, informal learners can pick up hobbies and interests, cooking, fitness, healthcare, travel. We can get uh, curriculum developers using video, and some of you are instructional designers. Let's go to a yes, no question up here, Haviz. Yes, no question. How many of you are instructional designers? You can get a yes, no question of these. Uh, yeah, how many of you are instructional designers? Yes, you are. No, you're not. Or have done instructional design at some point in your life. So, um, yeah, a lot of you, 35 to 17 so far. So you might embed videos, a snippet of a video in your class, right? You might be a librarian. You know, go ahead and post the results of these. So, yeah. If you can do that for us, and maybe it's already back there in that original slide there. Go ahead and post that. There we go. So you can see the number of people. We still have 140 people with us here. A librarians might post a video to show new procedures in a library, new networks, new materials, new technology. Executives might have you know, open and closed door meetings for you know, strategic planning with a video to inspire people, to inspire and uh, get people on the same page. Training managers might embed videos for you know, on-demand learning of their staff, of their unit, with their pressing schedules. Conference directors and keynote, uh, might post keynote speeches and um, key aspects of a summit or a conference, maybe before the conference starts. Bloggers might post a video to become a vlog to go with their blog. Um, podcasters might post a video to go with their podcast show to have a vodcast. 
uh, nonprofits and healthcare agencies and consultants might post videos of mission statements, of, uh, of um, new directions, of new ideas. Government and agencies might post videos of policies and proposals. Retirees might watch videos to gain new skills and interests. Unemployed might learn from OER and share it. Some guidelines, think about the learning theory behind all this, think about why you're using it, and um, assign students reflection activities about why you did it, what you did. Think about length, think about having students generate content, think about backup plans. If, you know, my computer didn't work today, I had a backup plan. You know, this wasn't the original camera. Um, have a backup plan. If a video uh, is in a firewall and you can't access it, have a, have a backup plan. Approve all videos that students send you because some might be inappropriate. And final thoughts, it's time to reflect on the power of video. It's time to share and use. This is a new age. These are new times. This is, this is a, you know, a wonderful new age. So will video be used? What do you think, A or B? Will video, will you use video in your next class? A lot of check marks going in there. I see a lot of checks. Underneath the hand, next to the hand there, you could go ahead and type your answer. I'll go ahead and type my answer in, what I'm going to do. Um, Steve says yes. Sharon says yes. Sharon says yes. Got a lot of you saying yes on this. Um, Laria Oro, Leanne Mahar, Louise Delagran, Lynn Jaffe, Jaffe, Kimberly Cullen, Kelly, Ken, Kay, a lot of you are. Only a couple of people will not. And maybe some of you aren't teaching a class. <laughs> uh, how many of ideas did you get from today on a 1 to 5 scale or A to E? It would be an A, B, C, D, E. 5, 10 or more would be E. Um, a, and let's go to an A to E scale there, Javiz. If you could switch over for that, that would be great. And you can go ahead and post the results in there on that. So A would be 0, B would be 1 or 2, C would be 3 to 5. And that's pretty much the end for today. This is the end of four weeks. Kirk Miller has joined the session. Thank you for joining Kirk. It's a great name, Captain Kirk. OK, post the results on this one. And I think that's the last poll we're going to have, if I'm not mistaken. A lot of you got 3 to 5. Some of you are still voting. It's OK. Go ahead and vote. And we'll still take, keep, take those votes. So these talks are posted all four weeks are at Training Share. And I have a free paper on using video at Publication Share from 2011 and another one from 2009. So it's time to share ideas. It's time to question. It's time to ask questions. We're at 5.38. Um, we're 20 minutes before closing time. Um, I just want to say the four weeks of presenting here have been fun. Next week is all Q&A and your time. I would like people to, to think about how to use the four weeks, think about how to use the ideas that we've been presenting in here. Send me a slide on how you're going to use the ideas, or send me a slide on with a picture of your dogs and cats, or a picture of your building, a picture of your city, your country. Um, you know, don't send me 10 megabyte files, okay? But uh, you know, under 5 megs would be nice. I could maybe take a couple of 10 meg files, but try and keep them small. Um, thank you, Major Tom. So this is a very focused session just on videos. We had week one on motivation and retention, week two on diversity and the R2D2, week three on learning thinking skills, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration. This week's just on video, more constrained, more refined. But there's a lot out there. So first we covered kind of the gamut of current trends today. We went through what's happening, you know, if we look at what's happening around the world in terms of, you know, all these MOOCs and stuff. And then we talked about um, all these video sites and then how to apply this in the real world. Um, how did you get comfortable in front of the camera? Mm, I don't know. Um, I think I grew up doing imitations and I wanted to be an impressionist and a comedian. So I, have, I was doing many impressions as a young kid, but I never went into acting. So um, I wish I had. 
Try and be an accountant, huh? What's my biggest video mistake? Oh, God. Um, my biggest mistake in video is in New Zealand, where they put me on Channel 1 TV, my first time ever on national TV. Mr. Bean took me off the plane. If you know Mr. Bean, the guy who looked like Mr. Bean, I'd been on three places in New Zealand the previous day. I come off the plane. He asked me to be on TV the next morning, get to the studio at 6 a.m. So I did, and it was like midnight, and so I got up early. Went there, no one was at the TV station but me, and then finally a few people showed up, they put the makeup on, they put the vice chancellor next to me of the university, at the University of Waikato in Hamilton, New Zealand. He's sitting next to me and they gave us three questions they're going to ask, and for 45 minutes we waited to be asked these questions. They were going to come on, going to come on, they never came on. The show's almost done, Channel One New Zealand, and finally they go back. We have a special e-learning summit in Hamilton, New Zealand, and we have this professor, Curtis Bunk's going to answer some questions. Kurt, could you tell us the state of e-learning? And the state of e-learning, it was not one of the questions. I went, blah, 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 on national TV. Okay? I literally went blah, 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 my first time ever on national TV. So you want to talk about the biggest mistake ever made? The biggest mistake ever made was don't believe the people who give you questions, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, be prepared for anything. So then they went to the vice, pro vice chancellor who worked with Margaret Thatcher previously, and he was great. And then he came back to me with one of the questions, and that was okay, because that was one of the ones on the list. I went back to my hotel room, and a guy gets in my taxi as I'm getting out of the taxi, and he looks at me and he says, you are the guy on TV. Ha 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 So, you know, I went to the conference, and people were wondering, what the heck happened to, to, to Kurt Bonk, you know, what, you know. So then Mr. Bean walks up, he goes, can you be on national radio? I said, I can't screw that up anymore, national TV. So I went on national radio. The first question was, what's the state of e-learning? By that time, I had an answer. It depends. So, okay, so the end of the conference comes up, and the host of the conference says, we're going to get all the keynotes to come up, Julie Solomon and, and other people in the UK, I think John Hedberg from Macquarie, Julie from Leicester, and we're going up there, and they said, what's the state of e-learning? <laughs> you know, who the heck knows, who the hell knows the state of e-learning? I put a finger in a socket, and decide. well, see, New Zealand had had Lord of the Rings at the time, and they got fancy and got high and mighty because Lord of the Rings was a hit. Now they wanted to be the e-learning hub of the world. They want to know the state of e-learning. So that was my biggest mistake. How much time does it take you for each live session? A couple days. Good question. It takes a while to get ready for a live session to prepare these things, but um, you know it's fun to do. E-learning is growing, yeah, but it's not just in New Zealand, Albert. Where are you, Albert? You're in, you're in, you're in Italy. Where are you, Albert? I know you're somewhere around the world. Help me, Albert. All those giants of e-learning in New Zealand. Jersey City. Oh, of course, Jersey City. <laughs> we'll all go visit Albert in Jersey City. That's, that's where we need to go. <laughs> now, Mustafa reminds us that we all can make it in this flatter world to Jersey City. All right. Other questions? It's only as fast as the hardware and the software. You know, we're dealing with, tonight we dealt with slow stuff. My lips aren't matching, okay? My lips don't match what I see. Now maybe the Illuminate tape will have matching lips, but right now I don't think so. Okay, more questions coming in. We should draw some more books. Ilho, come on over here. Let's draw some books. You know, let's, let's just give away a couple books to people who are here. Why don't you put a couple names of people who are in showing up in the screen there, you know? Let's, you know? We've drawn a few names here. I know Zachary won a book. Me, 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 Carol says. Carol, yeah, well, okay. Jessica Raspa. Jessica Raspa got a book. Is Jessica with us here? She's been posting like crazy in here. I don't know. Is Jessica with us? Um, no, she's not with us. Poor Jessica doesn't get her. No, we'll send her one anyways. Jim King is with us. Jim wants a book. Uh, there's a question coming in. What was that question I just saw coming in? Can you can you pull the class for me? Do you think? Uh, video adds the learning to a virtual class uh, like this. Okay, question is, um, yes or no question. Let's go to yes, no, Javis. Uh, do you think having a webcam here 
adds to the experience. If you didn't see me, would it be, you know, if you didn't see my lightsaber last week or me wearing a, a funny colored hat at any point in time, you know, does the video help, yes or no? You know, you can see eyeball to eyeball. You know, I, if I had a video, I could take all of you. If I could see, we could probably turn on video for a couple of you so I can take your picture in here. Let me just try and do, take a picture of all of you. That would be nice to have. Okay, so I got your pictures in there. So go ahead, Aviz, and put the uh, results of that one in there. It is question time. So far we got Zachary with a book, Jessica with a book, June with a book, Bob with a book. We should give a book away to a couple of the people. And, and we've got a couple people names. Go ahead and give me some more names. I've got Il Ho putting some names from people in the chat window. Go ahead and type some more names in here. We're going to have a special drawing of people who are still with us here tonight. So um, some people like the book. I'm going to give away a couple for people who are still with us. Go ahead and type as many names as you can from the list in here. All right, terrific ideas I can use. Aha. Uh -huh. Jordi LaForge. I saw I met Jordi LaForge from Star Trek was standing next to me in Austin two months ago at the site conference and I didn't recognize him. She was at the South by Southwest EDU conference and I didn't recognize him. Lisa needs a book. Uh, depends which Lisa. Remember, make sure you type in Lisa's name, LeVar Burton. Yeah, that's the guy standing right next to me from, from Roots, the, the, the movie. He's a pretty young guy still. Okay, we got Captain Kirk needs a book. We got some more names in here. Okay, we're throwing some more names in here. I got about 20 names in here so far. Okay, we'll get a few more. Let's get some more questions in here. Okay, we're going to give away, let's give away three books for the people still in here. G. Long needs a book. I sent books to G. Long. What are you talking about? <laughs> I sent a bunch of books. Okay. Uh, Candy J wants her name on the list. Mr. Spock wants his name on the list. What's the longest live session that I've ever had? Probably three and a half hours. It's a good question. But it can you can have all day, eight hour sessions. You probably take a break. We've been going for almost two hours here. These are being put up in YouTube, by the way. There's a YouTube site. If you type my name in YouTube and course sites, you can get all these sessions. Illuminate, they have there, there are four ways to get this stuff. One is to training share for the slides. Number two, you can go to YouTube and get the YouTube video, but there's no me in there. There's just the slides and the audio. The Illuminate sessions, those have the video, the slides, and the audio. And we will post the link to all of those. Do you have any experiences using Etudes? Um, I've heard of Etudes, but I haven't used Etudes. I'm curious what other people think. Illuminate, uh, Sukiana. I, I like to, Illuminate's a simple tool. And, and Aviz is up there in, in Edmonton. He's not in Calgary, but Calgary's the headquarters. And Blackboard bought out Illuminate and Horizon Wimba the same day last year, a couple of years ago. And they're using more Illuminate. So can you pull the class for me? Do you think the video has, yeah, we already pulled. We did. We posted that poll up there. How do you do this without grad assistance? Okay, I, you know, I went running today. I, I, asked my, I asked myself that question today. Uh, who just posted that question? Uh, Jeannie Asher asked me that. Jeannie, put Jeannie's name in there twice. She, we will draw her name out of the book probably then. Put, she, give me Jeannie Asher on a couple of those slips. Um, you know what you could do with 7 billion people around the world and a lot of people wanting to, to help and teach a class? You just advertise that you're doing something like this. You'll get tons of people to help. You don't need to have grad assistance. I mean, you know, this guy's kind of smart, but, you know, he, he's trainable. <laughs> you know, but you could get people who aren't there physically with, uh, present with you. Ilho, come on over here. Let's, let's draw some names here. Give me all those, Ilho. We've got a whole bunch of names going in here in the, in the magic hat. This is a second hat. The other hat had the names of people who were participating a lot. This is a hat of people who are still here. So I'm going to have Ilho come with me, Ilho, and uh, draw one. I'll have Ilho draw one. I'll have Abdullah draw one, and I'll draw one. Uh, go ahead. You read it. Let me put the headset on. You read it. Put the headset on. Okay. Go down and look at everybody. Hello. So um, the winner is Debbie. 
Debbie K. Wait a minute. Debbie K. won a race. No, okay. Debbie K. You have to send us your address and, you know, again, talk about how you're using video in your class. Abdullah, go ahead and draw one for us. Okay. Abdullah is drawing. He's, he's, he's picking someone from Saudi Arabia or the Middle East. And, okay, the name on there. Can you see the name? Sue something. We'll give it a Sue something. Sue Gazak. A lot of Sues are winning tonight in this fabulous sweepstakes of books. And I will hold this up in the air and I will pull another name. Maybe I should pull a couple of names. What do you think? Everyone's saying, yes, two names, two names. Okay, well, we'll see what I can do in here. We got Dan Barnett in here. And I'll try one last one in here. Uh, 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 Jeannie Asher. There you go. You ask for it, you ask for it, and ye shall receive. <laughs> okay, Leah says I like Wiz IQ, but for the price, go to rocks. Go to what? Go to meeting. I think go to, go to. The, I think go to meeting is a go to training. Go to meeting. Questions come in. What about 3D worlds uh, to produce video? I have a doc student named Miguel who answers those questions, <laughs> and I bring them in when I get them. No, I, I, I don't know the answer to that uh, in terms of 3D worlds to produce videos like um, Second Life or uh, Captiva or some other system. Um, but you can do use bit strips. You could use GoAnimate. You can use Extra Normal. Those are kind of those aren't 3D worlds. Those are machine character worlds, I guess. Um, that are fairly useful. I read my blog post video AAR to sim, sim, sim situations. Okay, so Major Tom might have some answers in there. Have to go. Thank you for motivating us, Abel says. What do you think about Khan Academy? Well, you know, I think he's doing a great service to get us to rethink education. Has he provided all that we need? No. Um, I, I, you know, can we really flip our classrooms with the video in the Khan Academy? To some degree, maybe. I, I think all resources well done can help, but it, and it really provides a, a way to rethink what's possible and what, what the common person on the street might contribute to education. But there's more that needs to be done about assessment. There's more that needs to be done about um, subjective content, not just objective content. Uh, and supplemental materials beyond lectures. We can't. We don't just learn from lectures. There are other things that we do that enhance learning. So Khan Academy refocuses us on, reifies a lecture. A Khan Academy reifies what we're doing right here. But what we're, how we're learning in this class includes the discussions, includes the reflections, includes the resources. So I, I take it as, as an important option. Yes, it is an option and an important option and valuable option. Hopefully you've learned a lot from this week. We're at 7 minutes to 6 Eastern time. So we have about 10 minutes before we need to close here. So let's see if, if anyone has any final comments or questions for this week. And hopefully we can, you know, and if you, if you don't, we can all start, you know, um, take off my bug eyes. OK, well, I'll take off my bug eyes. But I need to, need to jump again, need to jump in the air again a couple more. Whoop. We almost lost my computer on that one, but uh, yeah, take off my bug eyes. All right, oh, we keep losing the camera. Guess I can't do that. No more jumping. All right. Oh, what the heck? I'm going to jump again. I'm going to jump again. I'm going to jump again. <laughs> We're going to jump this way. We're going to jump this way. <laughs> All right. Maybe I should run around the table a few times. Somebody wants to take my bug eyes off. All right. So there we go. So. See you next time, Kirk. Psychedelic, come on over to my deck and have a hot tub chat with me in an hour if you want. And um, there we go. We'll get this back in there. <laughs> Midnight's approaching in Cape Town. I'm, I would love to visit. I've turned down some chances to go to South Africa. Someday, someday. Thanks, Irene, for your support. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, everybody. Maybe we'll close her down a little bit early tonight. We didn't really get a break in here, so some of you hopefully have gone out to get something. Canisius College, I know you have a new EDD online. 
Masters in Ed Tech at Canisius. I know I helped a little bit. Thank you, Debbie, for your nice and kind words. Um, Kathy, thank you for the kind words and many others. Um, this was fun tonight. You know, video is a fresh thing for me. It's, it's the newest area. I've done research on it about why people watch or share videos. Do we have any final questions coming in from anyone? Yeah, we do need physical addresses for the books. If you, if you want a book, and let me repeat who's won a book, Zachary and Dan and Jeannie Asher and Dan Burnett, I said, and Sue Gazette and Debbie Kay and Bob Dubois and June Cleese and Jessica Raspa. I will see if how we're going to, yeah, send an address to cjbonk at indiana.edu. C-J-B-O-N-K. And... Um, yeah. Next book is the, uh, the first week Nelly was on motivation and retention. I'm half done and that will be a free book. Uh, so go back to week one and I'll try and do a book The World is More Open. Good night, Major Tom. Good night, Sharon. Is that Sharon Lynn? Okay. Which Sharon? Who's your daddy? Um, <laughs> who's your mommy? Who's your doctor? Well, thanks for coming again, week three. Good night, everyone. I think that I think we've exhausted questions. I think we got through a lot of questions. What we did is, you'll notice we changed tonight by having questions evolve as we went through it. Um, yeah, hopefully you can sort through these and try them out. Time is the only thing that keeps us away from it. Yeah, you know. So I tried a different approach. I think uh, I think it was fun to do. Again, send me pictures. Send me. Um, what you plan to do with this content, maybe a bulleted list of three or four ideas, maybe send me, um, there's 74 people left, you know, if, if you send me something, you know, uh, you know, a picture of your, of, of your class, a picture of your building, a picture of your, but just one or two pictures, I'm not saying everything, but just one, preferably one, you know, or maybe a slide of what you're doing with e-learning. I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> Vicky. Keep them down in southern Indiana. <laughs> we don't allow cats here in south central Indiana. <laughs> no cats. I was sneezing tonight, jogging with the, you know, Bloomington, the reason they named it Bloomington is people are allergic to the city. I have students who cannot live here. It's, they sneeze. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. They're allergic to the city. I'm glad you got something, Dr. Mustafa from tonight. It, it, this is a good topic, I think. It's one that makes us, you know, situate our classes in real world stuff, current stuff. Week five is the last week, yes. Um, week five and week five is all Q&A. Course sites people may show us a few things at the end if we have time. I'm hoping that they do. That Sarah and y'all will come in. Sarah, y'all, you want to say anything? Are you still with us tonight? Still here, Kurt. Yes, thanks. Uh, Either one of you want to make a wrap final up this comment, week, we'll show uh, a yep. bit about how if you're going to obtain a badge, the best way to go about that in the class, just to make sure you're able to obtain that badge and store in the Mozilla Open Badge backpack. And then, you know, we'll entertain questions about, um, you know, the use of course sites as, as we've been using course sites as a way to deliver a lot of the information during this open course. We're just going to explain a little bit about what course sites is and how you might be able to take advantage of in your teaching situation. Thanks, Cheryl. And, and you'll notice we're getting a little incentive for people who are in the MOOC, who are discussing, people who have been high participants. We're giving books away. We're, you know, I'll try and uh, come up with a couple other incentives. I'm going to talk to you all and, and Sarah, but we'll see what we can do. And um, for next week is the final week. We'll see if we can raffle something else off. Um, maybe we'll raffle off Abdullah here and uh, send him. He's, he's pretty good with, uh, you know, as a Google jockey sitting next to me. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll wrap off Ilho and, 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 uh, and Abdullah. Okay, well, thank you all for, and, and again, next time, uh, same time, week five, all in May, all five sessions, Wednesdays and Thursdays in May, Thursdays in Asia, Wednesdays here in North America and Europe. Mark Kircher there in Dubai Men's College, it's um, probably Thursday there now. I don't know if Mark's still with us or not. But uh, Fred, Jeannie, Lynn, Lynn, Michelle, Mengwan, um, thanks for hanging around.